Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. This is Dom Hebblethwaite from the Chartered Institute of Linguists, and I'd like to welcome you all to CIOL's Technology for Translators Week. Of course, as we know, there's always hype around technology and translation, so much of it unhelpful. Uh, and I'm sure there's some of you who will have at times wished there was actually no technology in, in translation. Um, however, there are advantages, and as translators seeking to gain or maintain an edge, it's up to us to seek to use computer-assisted translation, cap tools, and other technology uh, in ways to help us uh, whenever appropriate. During the week, there will be demos from three of the leading cap tool providers. Tomorrow, it will be Memsource. Uh, sorry, tomorrow will be MemoQ. On Wednesday, it will be Memsource, and on Thursday. Trados will round off the week. Uh, if you've not already done so, you can still sign up to these presentations via our website, ciol.org.uk. Um, you should be able to find the banner on the homepage. If not, go to the resources tab, Technology for Translators Week. To begin the week, we start with COL's presentation from Sara Grizzo, where we will look at a whole range of technology tools for translators. We really think there should be something for everyone here, um, starting from some of the basics of cap tool and translation memory technology through to some more sophisticated features, then looking at, how, uh, at ways of how translators can make best use of machine translation technology and their translation workflows, and taking a broader look at some other tools beyond the standard cap tools um, that can um, make a difference um, and make a translator's life easier, maybe more fun, and certainly more productive. After completing her master's in translation and interpreting at the University of Trieste, Sara worked as a computational linguist, evaluating machine translation and um, training machine translation engines at SDL, the British company um, behind Trados, uh, and as well being one of the largest LSPs in the world. Sara then set out on her own as a freelancer, translating from German and English into Italian, as well as running uh, regular technology training workshops for BDU members, other translators, and organization, uh, organizations and companies. Carissima Sara, um, thank you for patiently waiting. How are you today? <laughs> I'm very good. Thank you. Hello, everybody from Munich, Germany. <laughs> good. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, just before we um, start, Sara, um, one thing which would be really helpful for us for the continuation of the um, week would just be run a, to run a couple of very quick polls, um, quick and anonymous polls with um, our viewers. Is, is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Well, wonderful. Okay, let me see if I can get this to, to work. Um, so the first question we have, hopefully, can you see that now? Uh, do you use computer-assisted translation tools? Do you use CAT tools? A very simple yes or no. If people can keep the votes coming in, that's fantastic. We've got lots of votes coming in. I'll just keep that open for maybe another five seconds or so. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, so we have a 58% yes, 42% no. So that that that's interesting. So 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 some users and some people potentially considering um, using cat tools. So that's very very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, and then the second and last question, and this is please just actually for the just over the half of you who said yes, could you answer how confident you're using cat tools? Not confident, confident or very confident. Thank you. Lots of votes coming in. So yeah, if you could keep on going. And we'll just give it a few more seconds. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, so we have a, uh, well, 41% not confident. That 41%, I, I hear you. Learning cat tools can be a, a steep learning curve. 48% confident and just 11% uh, very confident. And in fact, I think I haven't shared those results. So those are the results there for you. Um, okay, um, so, so thanks very much. We're just about um, ready to start now. Um, just a quick bit of housekeeping. We have currently 229 people live um, on, on the webinar. 
Um, to help the event run smoothly, we've turned everybody's um, cameras off and everybody's microphones off. Um, there will be plenty of time for a Q&A session at the end of the presentation and, and Sada's demo, so please keep your questions coming in via the chat. Um, as I can see, there's already plenty coming in. So um, thanks very much. And at this stage, Sada, um, I shall hand over to you. Thanks. <laughs> Right, okay. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. If not, please give me a shout. Not um, yet? I can't actually see your screen at the moment, Sarah. I don't know okay. if others... I try again. <laughs> okay. So, right. No. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you today. Um, I'm a bit nervous, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'm quite used to the trainees, online presentation, um, but mainly in Italian and German. So, <laughs> so bear with me. I need a couple of seconds just to, to come down and, and be ready. Okay. Um, in his introduction, um, Don mentioned that I work as a computational linguist. Yes, in Maidenhead, by the way, is to live in Reading and commuting every day back and forth. I have really fun memories of those of those years. <laughs> and I hope I can come to the UK very again very, very soon. <laughs> Let's see. Um, as I said, my, my job as a computational linguist, uh, that was actually my 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 very, very first proper job in the in the translation slash uh, localization industry. So basically after uh, after uni, I just started with, with, with SDL in the machine translation department. And um, so basically technology has been part of my professional life from, from the very beginning. Sometimes I also have the feeling uh, empty and, and myself, we sort of grew up together. <laughs> so um, as, as you can imagine, so I'm not scared of technology. Um, in fact, I, I, I find it really, um, really fascinating. So I'm, I'm a, a very, very curious person. So every time I see a new tool, new function, whatever, uh, I just need to, to find out everything about it. I need to, to see how it works. And um, I try to have sort of positive attitude and, um, and see um, whether this particular technology can help me translate uh, faster and possibly better too. Um, so today I'm going to show you um, different technologies. And then so my, my idea is to inspire you or motivate you to, to, try, uh, to try out different things. Um, of course, I'm going to show <laughs> plenty of, of tools. You don't have to, you know, to try out everything. Um, every, as we, we, we see, uh, we've seen it in the, in the, in the poll. We have different uh, uh, levels of experience and, and confidence, so uh, it's, it's it's completely fine. You just you just go for it. You try. If you maybe realize that doesn't work for you, or maybe for your language combination, or for your subjects spe specialization, uh, that that's completely fine. The idea is just you know to just start and try things out and and find the right way um, to work in a more productive and, and satisfying way. Today we have uh, three big chunks. Um, we have uh, firstly CAT tools. I'm going to show you how they work, so the basics. Um, and then we are going to go a bit further and I'm going to show you a couple of, of usual, usual pictures you, you, you can use um, every day. And secondly, machine translation. But uh, don't worry, I mean, I, I give plenty of post-editing uh, workshops, but I'm not going to talk about post-editing today for a change, <laughs> because everyone is talking about MT and post-editing, but I won't today. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, three different ways of using machine translation as an, as an aid, uh, as, 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 as a tool. Uh, we are not going to do any post-editing. We are rather starting from, from scratch and then taking MT with us and see, um, if it helps us or not. 
And then finally, uh, translating with voice, hands and eyes. Seriously, yes. So these are different technologies uh, that help you um, be quicker. Um, and also they, they, they give your, your shoulder and neck a rest. I know myself, I, I sit down all day and then in the evening, everything is sore. So I think we should take care of our bodies too, not only of our minds. Right, so first big topic, cat tools. Um, just really to start from the basic, uh, CAT stands for Computer Aided Translation. So really, if we want to put it really simply, it's, it's a software that helps you translating. So it doesn't have it has anything to do with machine translation. It, it's just a software you have in your computer or, or now, okay, we have plenty of online tools too, but basically it's a software where you can upload your, your file and then you have a set of, of features helping you uh, to translate, to be consistent and maybe to spot different mistakes or uh, to make sure that your terminology is correct and so on. Um, CAD tools, they have um, two main components. They have the translation memory on, one, on the one side and then terminology management on the other side. Translation memory, what is this? It's basically it's it's a, it's a database where you can you can store your translations. So you, I'm going to to show you uh, two two different CAT tools. I'm going to give you a demo with um, SDL Trados and with MemoCure. I'm not going too much into detail because I know this week you're going to have the the official demos for from the providers, but still you're going to see um, the the layout of this of these softwares so you basically have your 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 source of your source text and then you have space for your translation and every time you translate a, se a sentence then this sentence gets stored in your in your database in your translation memory so basically if you come across the same sentence uh, maybe later in a file or maybe in a future project you can sort of recycle it, recycle it and uh, you can also, the system basically make, makes comparisons. So if you, you, might, you might have uh, maybe an update of a manual or a file, and then you have a slightly different sentence. So basically system tells you, okay, you have done already something similar before. I show you what you've done. And also unlighting um, the differences. So you can see, okay, good. I can keep the sentence and maybe changing that bit that is now it's, it's different. What you can also do is uh, working with concordance search. So you basically you do a lookup in your translation memory again, but you're not looking for whole sentences. You you look for maybe single words or expressions. You know, I have always I, I have this experience quite often that as I, I know I know I I did this I did translate this this bit this snippet before and I, I don't remember. Uh, how I translated it. So I just look for, for that word, for that expressions, and then translation memory pops up and tells me, okay, you, you translate it this way. So I can have a look at it and say, okay, it's fine. Or maybe not, it doesn't help me. I want to do it differently. Exactly. And then you have uh, the terminology management uh, bit uh, where you actually have a glossary when, where you can, again, you can store your, your terminology. So if you do, maybe you have a, a new, a new word, new component. Maybe you're going to, to translate uh, some manuals. So you do a research and then you store your information, you store the translation. You can also save maybe a link or a picture, a video, whatever, uh, whatever information you, you might want to keep for future reference. Right, so now I'm going to show everything. <laughs> I, just, I just explained uh, from, from the presentation. Um, within studio. I prepared, uh, sorry, this is, uh, it is Italian, it's Italian into English. Um, this is a, a STL Trado Studio. Uh, this is, by the way, version uh, 2021, the, the very last version. Um, so you have uh, here, you see, the left column is the your source file and it gets segmented. So segmentation is this the um, this, this process when you have this was 
originally a Word file. And every time a studio com comes across um, a full stop, then he knows, okay, the sentence is, is ended here. So I, I need, this is one segment, then next, se next se sentence is segment number two and so on. So you have, when you upload your file, then you have this nice chart and then you have with, with numbers. And so you have the, in, in the, you have basically the text is being split and presented to you this way. Right, so um, when you go to the first um, first empty segment and you need to start translating, uh, you, you, you might notice it, it gets it, it's, it, it's, it's quite fast. Um, Studio looked up in, in the translation memory and okay, in this case, um, didn't find anything, right? Um, I'm going to show you because I prepare a, a really, really tiny uh, translation memory. I'm going to show what happens when you you come you you you, you go to a segment uh, with a similar content. In fact, this one, for instance. So here, um, I did translate something similar before. So Studio is telling me, ah, listen, you did something similar, and um, you did it this way. So this is your your uh, translation, and this is really helpful because I know there there are some some differences and you also have some sort of a hint with um with numbers so 84 percent which is, is it's quite similar but not completely otherwise you, you you will have when it's really um exactly the same sentence you will have 100 percent and in this case i know there is there are some differences and uh tool the tool is helping me uh, spotting those differences and you you see here um you have a uh, uh, this, this red text. So this is was the original uh, se sentence I translated a couple of days ago, <laughs> and this is the new one. So basically, what I need to do, uh, I just need to. In this case, I'm just going to uh, to demonstrate a, a more interactive way. Otherwise, you will have you can, you can show it uh, right now if you want to. We have plenty of time. You, you can also pre-translate your file. So we, we could do it like this way. Um, we are going to basically pre-translate uh, files. So we can do it this way. The, the outcome is the same. So now it usually <laughs> this happens so often when, I, when I'm online that the tools, they, they I don't know, maybe uh, my computer is not that powerful. So the softwares are a bit um, in trouble but now it seems to work, right? So I need to usually, so this is the, the standard, the default value, 100%. So I want to basically, if I just leave it like that, um, translation memory is showing me only, only the exact, uh, the, the, exactly the same sentences I have in trans my translation memories, but I want to also to see the similar sentences. So maybe I put 75%. Right, it's it's a really short file, <laughs> right? Okay, I want to reopen it again. Yes, please. Right, okay. In this case, we have just one, the one I showed you before. And if you pre-translate, then this similar content gets already inserted in, in your file. So you, you don't need to copy it from, from, from above, basically. So then if I, uh, I want to, to amend this one, I know I know where to look for the differences. And then um, I can go and see. Okay, I need to to write. A, it's, it's a text field. Yeah. Right. Then I what I I just done. I confirm my segment. So now if I go back, you can see it now. It it's stored in my memory, and now it's a hundred percent. Right. So this is the the the, the idea of uh, building up a translation memory, saving your translation, and recycle uh, them uh, as as you go. Uh, a good thing is also you might have, especially I'm thinking of those who who translate um, manuals or instructions or guide guide guidelines, where you have. Um, within your file repetitions or similar content where you have maybe you have to 
um, to pull something in and then maybe you have to take it out. And so you have really similar sentences. So as you go, you might even um, recycle the translation you're doing right now. So it's not only um, recycling something you did in the past, but also uh, keep going within your, your your file and then making sure you are translating uh, in a in a consistent fashion. Right. Then um, one more thing I mentioned um, before in the presentation was the concordance search. So uh, for instance, if I'm not sure um, how to translate fare click su, which means basically you click on something, <laughs> right? So um, maybe I think, oh, I'm not sure, did I use click on or maybe did I use select? So I want just to look up in my memory and, and see what I, I did. Or maybe, I mean, one thing is you, you maintain your memory, but really often happens that your client has his own, <laughs> maintains his own memory. So you, you might get a translation, a really big translation memory as a reference. So you want to do the, the concordance search and see what others did, right? Especially if you work, many people work on the, on the same project. All right, so I go, uh, I move left in the source column and I see, okay, I want to make a concordance search with Fare Click Su, highlight it. And then for um, SDL Trados user, you need to click on F3. And then you see it's also diff 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 the window changes. Now it's concordance search. And then I see, ah, oh, all right, okay. I use always select and not click on. Just it's just now for our demo, right? Okay. And then uh, one more thing I wanted to show you is the um, terminology. And we need bear with me. I need to shift something. I have so many things. <laughs> okay. Uh, we go uh, to segment. We move to segment four, and you see here uh, two things happen. Um, we have um, term recognition. So I set up um, just a general term is a general general glossary uh, with just a couple of, of entries really. And uh, Trados is telling me, um, look, um, I notice uh, those terms are in your translation, and they are in the in the terminology uh, too. So I have the two things. The window here popped up, and I, I, I saw some, some movement <laughs> up there. And I also have this uh, red line above the, the terminology. So I know, oh, OK, fine. I have, I have some sort of uh, reference, and uh, I, I can use it, right? So I don't need to, you know, every time to go and look for something. It's a really nice way to keep your translation consistent and, and also to be honest, to save time, because if, if I start to uh, to save terminology, maybe in on an Excel sheet or maybe even once on a piece of paper, and I need to to go and look in dif different places where I may I might have something uh, useful. So now the idea is that you have everything you need in one place, and also the system is is um, is also telling you. Uh, Please, please pay attention now you have something there um, and I'm showing I'm going to show you this is a function um, you have in um, in studio and in memo queue too. I'm not sure about memso you might want to to ask um, uh, this week uh, the person doing the, the, demo, the memso demo but basically um, when you have something stored in your um, in your terminology um, and you start typing, you you get suggestions from the system. So you have basically to type less. I'm going to show you now how it works. Right. This is autos. It's called auto suggest. Uh, in in this is the name of the function in um, in Studio. But you have exactly the same in memo queue. So you, I don't know if you can see it here. Is uh, is it's this? It's kind of a dictionary with. A Z in, in green, so you know um, this uh, this suggestion is coming from the terminology. Dom, you wanted to say something? No, I was just going to confirm that we can see that. So okay, perfect. Okay, and then you basically you just need you don't need to, you know, U B and so on. You just click on enter, and so you type less, 
and you and now of course now I'm doing the demo and I'm talking usually when I when I work I don't talk live <laughs> about what I'm doing but it, then you can really speed up and and um, and uh, insert big chunks of, of, of text um, especially I see it uh, a lot I translate um, a lot from German into Italian and in German I, I'm sure there are some uh, German speaking uh, listener today you know you have those compounds words you have these massive words and then in Italian is uh, there are maybe two words with a position in between and so you have lots to type and I, I mean I'm not, I'm not I mean, I'm not that quick, I'm not that good at it. And I also, I mean, I want to <laughs> just to have it in my in my segment so I can move on and maybe look at different things. So the idea for me as this 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 massive use usage use, usage usage <laughs> sorry of technology is that I free up time for for other tasks. Maybe I want to look for a synonym or I want to um maybe do a more deep research for something else or maybe i want to have some time at the end just to open my translation in, in the final format and maybe merge sentences or split them work on the syntax and all these kind of things right so you just uh, speed up tedious and boring task because i mean i, I don't know anyone that likes type it in the keys in the keyboard and so the idea is just you know to just get rid of that part and then have more time for for other more satisfying tasks and, and then in the end you delivery um, you can deliver a better quality too because of course you're looking at much more things much more deep you go much more into detail right um these are the basics I wanted to show you um, about cat tools, but they, of course, they are uh, much more there that uh, simple uh, uh, database you can look into. Um, you have, um, right? Um, you have plenty of uh, of other functions within the tools. I'm not going too much into detail because, I'm, especially MemoQ and and Studio, um, they are they have so many features i i'm i'm sure i'm not i don't know all of them um because and, and, and i don't want to go too much into detail because i know uh, not everyone is um is really used to using a cat tool so i don't want to overwhelm you <laughs> today um but just a couple of other things uh, you you can do with um cat tools you can use filters so you can you basically you if you you know you have just this uh um, your, you have your, your file with, uh, with all the segments. So you can say, ah, I want just to see segments containing a specific word or maybe a specific content type. I just want to see some, um, for instance, um, addings, or I want to see only segments containing tags. So you might want to do some sort of cross checks uh, within your, your file. Instead, instead of going through every single segment and looking by hand, basically, you just can use filters. Then another useful <laughs> thing is, is the spell checker. You have two, um, two options. Um, you have the spell checker working wh while you're typing in, in the same fashion as, as Word does. So you have that um, uh, green, uh, green line, Green, sorry, <laughs> red, uh, red line uh, underneath, telling you, listen, you, you, you didn't uh, spell it right, or you can run a spell check uh, afterwards. For instance, for um, SDL Studio is you as uh, F7. You just you have then you you do a complete check of the file, and then. I, I really like it. This one, the quality assurance. So you can uh, you can check uh, when you're done. Uh, many different things. You can check for consistency. So did I translate the same sentence always the same way? Because of course you start uh, with really good intentions, <laughs> and then uh, maybe in in the meantime, because maybe the file is big, and then you need maybe a couple of days, and then you don't remember what you did, or maybe you, you make some amendments here and there, and then, but you don't amend everything everywhere, so you need, you know, to do a really a general check to see, 
in order to see if there are some discrepancies. Then you can check punctuation. Did I put a full stop at the end of, <laughs> of every uh, sentence? Or maybe did I, by mistake, put in some double uh, spaces I don't want to have? Or maybe I have a, a space um, before a semicolon or something else. Uh, numbers, I, I do a lot of patents. Um, there are plenty of numbers there, especially in the claims at the very end. So, and then when you have, I don't know, uh, 10 numbers within a sentence, uh, I mean, it, it, I think it's human that you, you might have missed one. Uh, you can check for tags. Are they all there? Are they in the in the proper order? Um, what about spaces before, after, and so on? And then maybe you, you skip uh, a segment, it can happen, so you can look for uh, empty translations. So what I did for you, I took the same um, file and um, I put it in, this is MemoQ, <laughs> yeah, you see the the layout is it's similar. You have just here, you have the translation memory is on the on the right hand side. It's, it's, it's slightly different, but the, the idea is, is it's, it's the same. You have translation memory and, and terminology. Um, right. So um, you have here, um, I mentioned the spell checker. You see, uh, I put a mistake on purpose here and I have, as I said, a, like in Word, the, the red line telling me mm, you have to, to check it again. Maybe sometimes, uh, you know, there are proper names or new words uh, spell checkered doesn't know yet so you you might also want to store them and say you know this is fine i don't want you to prop me <laughs> a mistake again so you this is for you to learn next time it's not a mistake right um then i mentioned the filter uh, here you have the filter just above your 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 text your translation um and you can here you can put something uh, in the source and say i want to look for for instance, I want to make sure I use select for further click. So, and then maybe I have, uh, I don't know, thousand segments and not five. So I write here further click and I press enter. And then I have, you, you can see it's like sort of summary. Yeah, you don't have the segments in between. You just have those containing further click. And then you can check and say, oh no, okay. Uh, I, I this is a mistake I want to have select and not click on, for instance. Um, the nice thing here, you can also do a uh, double filter. So you, you might want to, uh, you, you know that by mistake you put some click on um, in, your, in, your translation, in your translation, but you know also you put plenty of select. So you know maybe half of, of, of the translation is correct, the other half is, is wrong. So I don't want to, to see the right segment. So I'm going to look for the mistakes and I do it by using double filter. So I, I, I put far a click and then uh, I tell MemoQ, please show me only um, the segments containing far a click in the source, but in the target, I only need the click on ones. In this case, we have just one, but then you have basically only the, the mistakes for you. Right. And then um, what I did for you, I prepare um, the, the QA um, functions already. They are for those using already MemoQ. Um, they are in the, um, in the settings here. Uh, right. This one, so I'm not going to, sorry, I, I can't open it because I have, and every time I open it, something from, from my client's show, so I don't want to, but this, this is the place where you go to set it up the way you want it. I did it already and I go to preparation, quality assurance and run QA. Okay. <laughs> okay, you are really patient, right? And then you get this report. 
where you have all kind of information you need. So you have description. So for here, for instance, is something you, you might not spot because it, it depends on the way you 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 set up your 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 layout and you have a, a space after a full stop you don't want to have in this case you just um take it out and, and confirm okay now i don't have a translation memory set it up with this project but basically i amend the, the mistake and then i move on to the next one this is um basically the same um the same mistake with two different uh, descriptions because of course the, the punctuation is different and then I have also the, the extra space. Uh, then I have maybe I skipped one, I forget, I forgot to, to translate this one and I do it. Then I have here a double space before new email and here also again you see I have also another spell check running. Right, and then you can. This is really nice with um, with MoQ. Uh, you you amend everything, and then you can refresh data, and then you keep going until you have an empty report. Otherwise, you can say ignore because this is not a mistake. For instance, I have um, I I translate also for the for the fashion industry, and um, we have uh, between Germany and Italian different sizes. So the uh, the numbers they don't match so i have every time this mistake ah you you mismatch the numbers which is not a mistake because we have different sizes and so i have to click here and say ignore so that's not actually a mistake this is a false mistake right so that was it for uh cat tools i just want to move on to um the second part which is the uh machine translation the sensible way um, because of course, I, some some of my contacts they they always laugh because they, oh you know um, you do plenty of post editing uh, workshops and I'm really busy at the moment with them, and but at the same time I I always tell well why not forget about post editing <laughs> why not use MT in a different uh, uh, kind of way, and I really I really believe technology is 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 is, is amazing and I. I started with MT 15 years ago, and uh, sometimes I feel like like I'm a dinosaur, really, because I went through every single step this this technology did, starting from rule based and statistical now neural. So I I saw the this really this technology improving, and it, it amazes me what it can do. But on the other hand, I think post editing, and I know I, I'm sure. Many of you did already see some post editing, or maybe they they completed a couple of assignments, and and you know it, it can be really daunting. I mean, if you do maybe technical content, it's fine because usually in a manual you you can't do really much. You have your instructions, and there is no really room for creativity. You just go through it, and then maybe you're happy when you're done. Uh, but what we see now at the Post editing is being used for every kind of content. I'm not agree with that. I think MT it's a powerful tool, but we should try to use it in a, in a different way. So MT is fine to boost the productivity, but um, in a different way. Um, and I have three suggestions. So we can use MT as a reference. Uh, we can use MT as a typing aid, and we can use MT the productive the predictive way i'm going to now to demonstrate uh these three the first two with um, studio again and the third one with with lilt which is an online tool coming for from a company doing machine translation and also working as an agency um the idea is that you start from scratch as you do with the human translation so you have empty segments and um empty helps you to, with those segments who can be maybe machine translation translated because they are quite simple and straightforward. Uh, otherwise, you just pick those uh, elements you might find useful. Um, so the idea is you are, because the feeling I have when I do post editing is like I, ha I have to go through this output and I can't do really much. I just need to go and look for mistakes and make a few amendments here and there, but I have 
there is no room for myself, basically. I'm just checking. It's like a more passive task. Whether with MT as, a, as an aid, as a tool, I, I'm, I'm still in charge. I build my, I write and build my own sentences the way I want. If MT is helpful, I can use it. If not, I just keep on going with my my human intelligence. <laughs> now we, we we might call it like that. So we were there before, but now it, it feels like a, the way around, right? So the idea is uh, you have at the end uh, you a human product, not a post editing, uh, and um, and you are faster so you you basically you translate but you are faster so you you free up time for checking other details as i as i mentioned it before or you also have free time for other activities you might want to you know to do professional development like we are doing that right now or you want to have like i don't know time with family time for hobbies because i'm 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 the kind of person i think you you don't need too much money to to have a good life. So at some point, I just want to have more free time and not even more money and money. So if you are always working, you you don't even have time to spend it. So uh, the idea is I'm done quicker and then I can do uh, I do something else. All right. So um, we go back to um, studio and um, it's again the same uh, file. And this time I. Um, I put uh, DeepL, uh, so machine translation in, in my, my, I selected it in my project settings. So every time I go to, I move to an empty segment, um, Studio tells me, um, look, you have something um, here. You have your output from the machine translation. And then I set it up the way that it doesn't get copied automatically. So I just see it as a, as a reference. So. What you can do if you work this way is like is saying, okay, um, I read Italian, then I read the, uh, the English output, and then I think, okay, this uh, segment is um, it's it's fine to me. So I I want it. I can just copied it, and this is for for Studio is Control and T, and then it gets copied. Um, maybe I want to make a few small changes, uh, maybe uh, with, the, with the help of Outlook, I'm just making it this up just to show you what you can do. With the help of Outlook. And then you confirm it and move to the next one, right? So, and then you have the next one. And so you go, maybe you see, you know, I'm, this is completely um, useless because I need to write something completely different. Again, I'm making this up. Then you can uh, maybe write down something you, you need to do. I don't know. And then you move on. And so the idea is just that it's up to you to use it or not, that you read and then you make a quick evaluation. Is it usually I have this like in my mind, this kind of, 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 uh, um, workflow is like uh, one it's perfect then I copy it and, and I'm happy and confirm and move on maybe it's uh, okay and then I copy it anyway and then I make my, my changes or maybe three is really rubbish and just leave it there up there <laughs> and then I go and, uh, and and I type my my own uh, my own translation this kind of approach where you have a lookup in the basically in the, in the machine translation, you can have it uh, in MemoQ too. But Studio goes a little bit farther, and this is also the way I I still prefer. Uh, I mean, I really love MemoQ. I really like the lean uh, Outlook, the lean uh, interface. But usually, uh, Studio um, offers another uh, um, another feature which is really really it's great and it's auto suggest we saw it already with the with the terminology so let's move maybe to this very same segment so we we have we, we see the, the the combination of two no right we don't see it because i don't have i didn't open here no. let's see right now should be working right okay um so basically uh we've seen auto suggest so we have these uh, live suggestions popping in for terminology but studio does something on top which is um suggesting from 
this output here from the empty output up there. And and I'm quicker when, when I show you <laughs> before I start I talk too much. So I, I start um, uh, typing. And you see this is auto suggest uh, with a uh, automated translation with machine translation. So you have in blue, so you know this is not a terminology, this is machine translation. And then this way you can, um, you don't need to copy everything and then erase and amend what you don't like. You just go the way around and you pick, you pick up what you need. Let's say I want to, I want to start different and I want to say, uh, write uh, the subject. So I write, write, I need to write it myself. <laughs> no help there. Uh, and then I have subject, exactly. And then I press enter. Um, of the, then I say, okay. Um, and the email message, I like that one. I can move with the, with the keys, with the, with the arrows. Now, um, to the bottom and then, so up and down, you can move it basically. And then I like what you want. And, and maybe now I want to, to write um, the address of the recipient. So, and the address of, and basically it adapts uh, to, to the keys I'm pressing. So depending on what I, what I, I press, Depending on the on, on the on the letters I start with, I get the the suggestions. So now again, this is like this is a translating with with, with live um, explanation. It, it doesn't really look like I'm really quick, but when I'm on my own in silence, uh, with the help of this function, I'm I'm really really happy, really happy and quick. So I can almost double up my productivity. So hourly uh, output, and uh, it's it's a really good feeling because it's still, as I said, as it's still mine, it has it has my mark on it, but I'm much much quicker because it's to be honest, I'm it's not really satisfying to <laughs> to, to digit to type address. I mean, there's all you have like this, those very very long words like globalization and <laughs> or localization and so on. So there is no much you can there is no added value there you just need to to type it and then i mean i i for me to me it's boring so i, I i'm really happy to have uh, something um helping me right and then i'm going to the, the third the third way the the pre predictive one is uh, with lilt so this is what you say so lilt basically uh, is is a provide technology provider providing uh, mt but it is also a, an agency so if you um work for them you get an account and you work with the lilt online tool which is this one i'm showing you right now and the idea here is again you start from scratch and then you have um you see this is um this is now the, the way around so we have english into italian you have your sentence the, 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 the layout is a bit different because you have um you need to open a sentence and then close and move the net to the next one. So you, you don't have these uh, these two columns. You have a, a source and and target underneath. It's a, it's a bit different. But basically, what it does, um, it works with um, machine translation, with translation memory if you have one or terminology, and it predicts what you're going to to type. It's a little bit um, like the technology we we all. We, we all have in our phones, sometimes it's quite annoying because I want to type something else and my phone is, is keeping telling me uh, something else, something, something I don't want. But this is basically the same idea that the, the software is trying to predict what I'm going to type based on what was the, the word I had before. This goes, this goes a little bit further because you have the typing bit and also code together with the with the machine translation so it's trying to predict based also on the on the translation and what you need to do uh, you see here in this is um, violet um, is, is the alighted uh, uh, word you can you can enter so you press enter and then it gets inserted so you don't need to to do much but if you change something um, now I'm trying to change something to show you uh, this suggestion here, uh, adapts in real time. So what we we've seen uh, before with auto suggest, they 
those were suggestions coming from the from the empty output, but they didn't change, they didn't adapt. So you could basically just get suggestions from the from the very uh, one suggestion. The, it, it, it didn't change based on your choices. This one, um, it adapts uh, to, to your style, possibly. So Microsoft Teams. Um, now I'm putting a verb instead of a um, for noun. Um, I, I made a few changes, and as you noticed, uh, it picked it up and then added the, the suggestion. So now this is a really simple sentence, but you 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 can use it also if you, for instance, if you change from feminine to masculine and the way around, it it comes in really handy because sometimes I need you need to change the verbs to the adjectives to and so on. So this is again uh, technology uh, at your service, <laughs> but in a more human way. I, and uh, fortunately, I mean, this is the only the only company I know uh, who supports this kind of approach. Usually, you you have your your files pre-translated, and then you need to do your your post editing. Right. So uh, now uh, I'm sort of wrapping up <laughs> and coming to the to the final bit, the um, the voice and hands, and so. Uh, translation uh, environment so you can actually uh, use voice hands and eyes uh, for, for translation slash review um, I'm always amazed by all those uh, all those um, gadgets <laughs> we have at home we have Alexa and so on and sometimes I really wish I could say studio um, look up or concordance search so now you have to do so much manually you have to highlight you have to move uh, you have to, to do searches, you need to filter. Why uh, couldn't we use our voice, for instance, just to do this re repetitive task, right? So, there, so I'm going to show you, um, the first one is again an online tool, which is free to use. Uh, just be careful what you put in there. It's great for, uh, for um, yeah, getting some practice also with, with post editing, but they store your, your text and your translation. So a bit of, a bit careful. It's good to 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 yeah to give it a go, but you don't put uh, uh, your client's um, files in there. And they built in a uh, voice recognition function, which is actually from Google. So they just um, insert it in there. And then the very last bit, it's a, a um, video from YouTube um, showing. Um, a prototype from the uh, uh, DFK, DFKI, uh, which is German for uh, German Research uh, Research Center for Artificial Intelligence um, in Saarbrücken. Um, and then what they did, they tried to to build. They, they actually did a slightly different uh, working environment when you have um, different um, input options. You can use uh, gestures. You can you use speech and gaze. So, and then, and of course, this this I can't uh, I can't do any demo because I don't have this tool, unfortunately. But there is a uh, really nice uh, YouTube video we're going to 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 watch together at the very end. So um, let's move to um, MailCat, which, by the way, works only with um, Chrome. So you need this specific browser to use it. Um, and now again, uh, this is the same text uh, as in Lilt, but uh, yes, because I need to dictate in my, in my own language, you know, my, my mother tongue. So you have here, you need to first to uh, activate it. So make sure dictation is active. And then you have here, you need to put, to click or select <laughs> the, the microphone. 
and I, I just it, it doesn't always work. But just to give you an idea what we could possibly do in the near future. Right. Uh, Microsoft Teams è un app di collaborazione che aiuta il tuo team a rimanere organizzato e a conversare tutto nello stesso posto. Which is okay, we can say then we, if you if you put um, right <laughs> if you then if you click on translate and it gets uh, stored in the, in the general um, memory tool. So this tool has it's got a huge massive uh, general translation memory. Um, it was okay. It's, it's not too bad. So this could be um, our future. Now I have some colleagues here in Germany. They use. Uh, uh, Dragon actually speaking, um, but this is a different tool. It doesn't always work that well with uh, MemoQ and Studio, but the idea is just that you dictate. Uh, and it's uh, it's not very good for your throat at the end of the day, but for your neck and shoulders. Yes, that's definitely. So now I need to uh, ask Dom to, to stream the YouTube video for us. Okay. And, but maybe before I need to, no, you did already. Okay. It took me out of the sharing bit. Okay. I am hoping that I will now be able to play the video. Yes. Yeah, so... Is that appearing? Slowly. <laughs> It's uploading, it looks like. Right, well, I mean, just as that uploads, I have to say, Sarah, that was an absolutely amazing presentation. We've been getting so many questions and thanks coming in through the chat. Oh, really? Oh. Um, so you wouldn't believe there's, there's so many, so many, so many thanks. So um, I'm just hoping this video uploads and plays. Um, can you see anything happening? No, I see this, this uh, circle turning. <laughs> Uh, right. if, I mean, I, I, we could also uh, move on to the Q&A session and then when it's up and ready, we watch it then at the end. I mean, I don't mind. I'm, we are going to share the presentation and I put the, the link in there. So if it okay, doesn't we, work, well, maybe uh, yeah, you can watch it then uh, later. Okay. Yeah. I, I see that it's it's, um, it's playing for Desreen Bogles getting it to play. If other people would say in the chat, if they are able to see the video, that would be great. In the meantime, um, I say thank you for your attention. Um, I hope, really hope, I managed to show you something something new, also something new for for everyone because I know the the experiences are different. So. For okay. me, the challenge is to, to make sure that every everybody uh, will hear something new. I hope I managed to motivate you to try maybe different features or a different tool. And now I'm just I'm curious about your questions. Okay, and I'm going to yeah. just stop myself as being presenter because I think this video isn't quite working. So we will send that through for everyone as a follow up. Um, okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remake you presenter and I'm going to go straight into the questions. We've got so many here. Um, okay, um, what is the most reasonable output for post-editing in terms of weighted words per hour? What are the standard rates for post-editing, if any, from Sonia Kitanovska kimovska Thank you very much for your question. Okay, oh, all right, okay. Um, there are many, many studies about this. Um, my experience is of course, it depends on the on the post editing level you want to achieve. You might know uh, with post editing you can go for live post editing you, when you basically look only at different uh, at specific things like, of course, meaning and translation mistakes. Um, but maybe you don't really take care of style or punctuation, whatever. So of course, then you can do much more because you're just looking at specific things. And then you have full post editing where you basically you check everything like a, like a human translation. So it varies a lot. 
uh, my experience is you you can go from 800 words per hour up to 1500 it's it's it's, wow. it's very it's very it varies a lot and then of course it depends on the quality of the output if you work sure. with 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 a client um that uses just Deeper. I mean, I'm just men keep mentioning Deeper because Deeper is a German uh, product yeah, and, and it's yeah. very, very popular and it works also quite well. <laughs> but let, let's say uh, your client uses uh, Google, uh, it's just a general system, and then you have maybe very specific content, and of course you need to go and check a lot and, and check and amend a lot. So you have more mm. to do and you are slower. Whereas if you have a client with a, a customized engine, right and you you have maybe just few things to look at and then you are really really quick mm. so it varies a lot my my um tip is if you if you, if you can uh, you should measure your productivity just uh, get used to write down how much you can manage in an hour or so and then go back to those figures and and see if there is an improvement or not and uh, and it's it's a good thing from a business point of view anyway so you mm -hmm. should we should all freelancer we should work with numbers i do it a lot i see uh, which projects are more um um bringing me more money uh and and mm -hmm. so on. so i do my, my my math and then so i know which clients i need to take <laughs> best care of for instance yeah and um yes and for okay. study is even more important that you measure your productivity but yes these are um, so 800 to 1500 wow. and just to put that into context what might be an average sort of um you know how many words might might you do if you're translating raw if you like without um any tools um Really, anything? No suggestions? Nothing? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, um, just. Yeah, I, I would say between three hundred and six hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it depends. Uh, if it's just content. a general content, yeah. you don't need to do any research. You just keep going. Um, whereas if you are like uh, something like I don't know, like legal, where you need mm -hmm. you know to go and 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 investigate the background or maybe ask the client what happened there. So, and because of the the time you you spend researching, of course, uh, it's also time you're translating basically. So it of course adds up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and the second part of the question, um, what are the standard rates for post editing, if if, if any? Right, I mean, yes. we know obviously translation is, is often is by the word, and then you know according to matches and fuzzy matches. Um, any thoughts on on post editing and rates? So post editing rates, you have three again three in in German you say all good things are three. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Again, with the rates, you have three approaches. You have um, yeah. word based, where you have yeah. a uh, price for a post editing word. So use, usually, um, yes, we do a recap for those who are not really familiar with post editing. With, with sorry, with cut tools. So you, when you have uh, your cut tool, you do you upload your file, and then you can run analysis against the translation memory to see how many how many segments you have been already you had already translated, and how many phases with this uh, eighty five percent, for instance. So you have then. For each category, you have a price. Like if it's, if it's if it's hundred and it's fine, you might not even get paid for that. You just ignore it. But this is another discussion. But anyway, mm -hmm. then you have at some point you have so-called new words, where you mm -hmm. have you have to start from scratch. But then, of course, if you use machine translation, you won't have any new words anymore. You are going to have pre-populated segments, mm -hmm. right? So you have then mm -hmm. empty words, and those have a, a price and then my experience is is between again it depends a lot uh, on many different things of between course. 30 percent so three zero and 70 percent right. of a new um uh, for normal world mm -hmm. and then it depends again on the level uh, and then on the on the language combination mm -hmm. and on the on the country <laughs> of your clients yeah, so sure. for me for instance if you work with with swiss clients they they pay really well okay maybe to germany and to italy so right yes, okay it depends a lot and then you have this is the word price so yeah. it, my, my rule of thumb is 50 percent no less okay. than 
because of course, uh -huh. even if you need to do a, a light post editing, you still need to read. I always tell my, my, my colleagues, you need to read, even if you don't correct anything, it, 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 it takes time to read and, uh -huh. of course, uh -huh. and to compare and to check. And um, then you have um, rates per hour, where you, you say, okay, I spent, I don't know, two hours post editing, and then you have, of course, your hourly rate. Uh -huh. And then it's a bit kind of, it's, it's a question of trust. <laughs> some uh -huh. clients say, okay, you, you tell me in the end, some others, they say, no, I want something written. And then you can do, for instance, with MemoQ, you can run a report about your, your, your working time, and then uh -huh. you need to attach this. I don't have a good feeling about this because if my client doesn't trust me, I don't know if I, it's a good client, but this is again sure. another discussion. <laughs> and yeah. um, and then you have the editing distance. So we are going really, this is really for advanced users, <laughs> mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. you basically you measure uh, the distance between your output and your final product. So really you do the math and you see uh, on a pen um, with a percentage how much you change. And then this is the discount that you 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 have to to, to give basically. Like I used um, seventy percent of uh, of the output, and I changed thirty percent. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. distance is seventy percent. So we we take now a really straight number. This is ten cent euro cent, uh, mm -hmm. then I get paid seven cent, right? So this is another. These are different approaches. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, my suggestion is uh, keep uh, track of your productivity because then if you know how much you can handle per hour, then you can switch from one approach to the other and then you always know, is it now fair for me or not, right? Mm -hmm. So you need, again, you, did, you need to do some math. If, if you're sure. not, if you didn't like in school, <laughs> it's time to brush it up. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Yes. Okay, um, a question from um, Keris Bertram, who's sent a few questions in. Thank you very much. Um, are these tools only available in the cloud or can you download them? Um, Keris is concerned in some cases about confidentiality. Exactly. So uh, Studio and MemoQ, they are desktop based. So you you buy the license and you, you download the okay. executable and you, you install it in your in your computer and then it's, 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 it's there, it's yours. Uh, Lilt, for instance, is uh, or Medica, they are all uh, tools that are on the cloud. So, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay Lilt, for instance, uh, that's yeah. a closed environment. So, if you work from them, they take yeah. measures in order to make sure that it's it's, it's safe. Uh -huh. But if you use just free tools, and um, there is always a bit of a risk. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, maybe you you might you might ask then the 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 tool providers this week um, to tell you exactly uh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. what you need yeah. to do to make sure uh, that it's safe. Yeah, yeah. And there, there are some questions in here which are kind of tool specific. So we'll probably generally try to um, uh, avoid those and save them for later in the week or they will address all mm -hmm. of these questions afterwards. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, Michael Grok, um, every use sentence is used to form every segment. Is it possible to form segments from phrases, clauses, or single words? Um, I think so. I mean, you can, uh, what, what I show you is, is called segmentation. So you can yeah. basically cut your, your text, and, and, yeah. and the standard default uh, rule is, is a full stop. So uh -huh. it's a full uh -huh. stop. It's a new sentence, right? But then you can amend your your segmentation rules, especially if you have like okay. abbreviations, because you don't want yeah. to have um, after eg a new seg a new yeah. sentence, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I guess you can do pretty much everything. Um, but this is something you need to do before you you start in the project okay. settings. You need to set up everything accordingly. Single words, I'm not sure about it. But what okay. you can do. Uh, when you're, you're, um, when you have your project up and ready, you can always go in the in the segment and split it. So you can do it as always after okay. afterwards. You say, okay, this segment is, is um, I need to to split it, or the way around is merging it. I, I okay. do it a lot because I want to 
because in Italian, for instance, you, you will have just one sentence and not two short ones, for instance. So yeah. I merge yeah. them. And yeah. then I, of course, I, I will have only one full stop. So we, you can do also on the go. Okay. Yes, okay. of course, it's more time consuming. It depends on what you're going to do with it. That, yes, that, that, that's great. Well, hopefully that also answers. And um, Keris had a, um, a similar question about combining sentences. So, mm -hmm. so I think we've sort of covered that there. Um, an interesting question. We've had a few similar questions here. Um, how long does it take a normal person you know maybe somebody who's not worked for 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 example sdl or you know one of these um uh providers to become proficient in in, in studio that's from keris we've also got a, a similar question from armando teles velasco uh, how long will it take to master this software and i know we looked at lots of tools but you know just to give a general feel maybe yeah i think a couple of weeks i mean you just need to do it on a regular basis ideally every day so just you you come across different um situations then you need to to look for the specific function and 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 you know learn how to do certain things but you know i'm i'm still uh, learning i and i mean I've, yeah. I've got the basics and i've got advanced features but there is still something something new every week recently oh. i had a client sending me an excel um <laughs> an excel file with so many tabs I don't know, 50. And then yeah. I had uh, text in red and text in, 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 in uh, black. And then I had to right. translate only the, the red text. So I basically had to, to set up a um, studio with Excel. Yeah. So that uh, studio will pick only the red text. <laughs> and mm -hmm. there is a function for that. I didn't know. So I found it mm -hmm. out. And right. It worked. So once you master the, the basics, yeah. Then you you can go. I mean, in in the worst case scenario, you are not using a function, but it's nothing mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. right. And then they all have this the same approach. So if you then if you can use Studio, then you can also use MemoQ. Okay. Okay. Maybe. I, yeah. I, I guess the sort of standard software principle of the eighty twenty, you spend eighty percent of the time using just twenty percent of the the functions is <laughs> is, is enough without always being the hardcore. Um, users. Okay. Um, just as I go down here, uh, Mabel Fan, are CAT and machine translation um, tools, do they apply to the Chinese language or just for European languages? Um, I certainly know that at least the CAT tools apply to um, Chinese languages. Do you know about some of the other tools you, you showed? Um, I know MateCAT as Chinese too. You might want to have a go at it. Um... I think, but they supported it. Then you, you just what you need to do is to find an engine supporting Chinese. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the tools they support, as, as far as I know, they support any almost any language mm -hmm. for a human translation. So then, mm -hmm. what you need to do is just to find a plugin and connect to the machine translation engine, and you need a provider who is working with with Chinese. I know. They are not there yet because, yeah, the the language is a bit com more complex than mm. character-based languages. But I know they are working on it, so you just need to do some research and and try maybe try out different engines just to find the the one for you. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting question from um, Ea Bader Edin, and apologies for mispronouncing the name. Um, so, so first of all, thank you for the, 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 the webinar. Any difference between post-editing, revising, and proofreading? Uh, okay, <laughs> revising and proofreading, I know even here in Germany, everyone has a known opinion about those. But I, I think the question is, uh, checking a human translation shouldn't be that different from checking a machine. This is the, 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 the usual question I get. So it's like basically you're doing this reviewing. Yes and no, because of course uh, you're, you, you are reviewing or checking and making sure the final product um, fill in uh, at least, oh, now I'm stuck with English, but at least you, you have some standards, you make mm -hmm. sure they are fulfilled. But of course the machine uh, uh, doesn't work the same way uh, a human colleague will do, right? So you have um, different kind of mistakes. 
mistakes I hope my human colleagues <laughs> won't do. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh. And first and so different uh, kind of mistakes then you have mistakes they don't usually they don't look like mistakes they are really well uh, eaten um, the problem with I mean NMT is great um, but these the mistakes now they are not that um, obvious I mean I used to work with the, with the previous approaches and you have really you could see straight away something isn't working in here. And now we have these nice sounding outputs with plausible sentences that possibly don't match the, the source text. So you, uh -huh. you need really to, it's a different kind of, of approach, really, it's of uh -huh. attention you have to pay. And then the, the main, really the big pain <laughs> uh, still, let's see what, what, the, what the research will do in the, in the future. Uh, those systems, they, they work, um, they translate sentence by sentence, so without any yeah. context. So you, you, you will have really different performances every, in every single segment. So maybe you, you will have uh, one good segment and then maybe something really, you need to just erase it and, and translate again. And it goes up and down all the time. And, because, and, and you have sort of navigate through these this, this files and uh, try to also to, to make sure uh, the final product is, 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 um, is on the, at the same level too, because if yeah. it always changes, when I usually do human reviews, I just, it's either really good and then I just check a couple of things or it's really bad, but it's everywhere bad. And then I just have a lot to do, but at least yeah. it's, uh, it's like consistent in in his way, whereas with um, machine translation you have these up and downs, and um, so it's a different um, kind of concentration and 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 effort you need to do. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a couple of similar questions um, with regards to tools for part-time translators or, or or beginners. You know, any recommendations mm -hmm. as to types of tools? Obviously, we can't go into great detail talking about individual tools and making recommendations but any general principles for getting started yeah for getting started okay you have always um the the, the trial period you even if you want to say i want to to try out tool abc <laughs> mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you can uh, have like 30 days uh for free and you, mm -hmm. and you don't have to buy it and then you have of course to make sure you have time <laughs> to sit down every day and and, and try it out or mm -hmm. uh, you can go and look for um, free online tools maybe they are not that uh, advanced maybe you you won't have all those nice features for for excel for instance <laughs> but still you have you get the idea with these these two columns right and left and terminology and spell check and so you get you just get started you you you, you get the feeling how they work and then uh, it, well then it depends really much on your clients then the clients at some point will ask you to use a specific tool and then you have to yeah maybe you have to do this uh, you have to buy it and say if this is like um, I'm investing some money in this cooperation mm -hmm. and uh, yes I know some for some of them I'm not mentioning any <laughs> but uh, you can also ask for alliance a license um i did that in the past I, right. I didn't want to buy it and then the client was say okay you're doing just a couple of, of of task for me anyway so i give you a, a license and then it, it was giving me the license just for the time i needed for translation then i had to hand it back and that was mm -hmm. nice too so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. okay an interesting question thank you uh, from uh, fotini sarri um what size of documents based on number of pages would you think that translation machine systems are more suitable for? Um, would these systems be more suitable to specific type of text with numerical shape tables, indices, et cetera? Or what kind of text would they be suitable for? Uh, I think the size doesn't really, doesn't matter. It takes only a bit longer because this, this, the, the neural approach is very, cons uh, I mean, re resource, Consume, the computing resources mm -hmm. requirements are very high. So if if you, I, I, I did a couple of times for my de for my demos. Um, I pre-translated a file with like 
20,000 words and I could go for coffee and chat and, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it, yeah. it took uh, uh, a lot of time, but it, it works. So it, does, it, it takes only longer. Yeah. Um, you need to go for um, content which is basically very standardized. So mm -hmm. you have no ambiguity whatsoever. Uh, you have really uh, nicely written sentences. Uh, not too complex, not too many secondary sentences, not too complicated, not too... Um, you need to really to make sure you pronounce, pronouns are there, so nothing really between the lines. Um, the uh, text, so content that is consistent as well. So, I mean, in, in mm -hmm. the first place, because mm -hmm. everyone is talking about, oh, your translation needs to be consistent, right? What about uh, source texts that are not consistent, then you're going mm -hmm. mad trying to find out is it talking about the same things now or is it a different one? I had it today, the same thing yeah. called in three different ways. And then it, it, it for, for us, it's like, okay, I'm going to ask, I'm going to check. For the machine, it's, it's a nightmare because machine translates uh, zero and one. <laughs> it's math mm -hmm. for, for, for mm -hmm. the machine. So mm -hmm. you need really a nice, clean uh, source text. Um, not uh, you. You need proper sentences. I mean, with with a verb, with a predicate. Um, it doesn't work really well with with the addings and and titles. So, so if you have a list, it doesn't really. Then you you, you might okay. prefer working with with a good translation memory, right? Mm -hmm. So or maybe with terminology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did a couple of time um, software localization, and I mean not the documentation. The, the interface yeah. and it was okay. a nightmare. You, yeah. you could yeah. forget it because it was it was from right. English and English, of course, it's a wonderful language. But you have one word can be anything, <laughs> can yeah. be a yeah. verb, yeah. a noun, and yeah. so you have, yeah. if you have if you have just one word, the machine doesn't have any context, have any, any idea, and then you can just erase it and, and start from scratch. So, and my suggestion again um, is just to run a couple of of, of uh, um, of just to, to try, you, you try different kind of content and you see what you get. And after a while, yeah. you are you are used to the output and you are used also to the suitable output. You see straight away this is going to work. Okay. This is not going to work. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, um, on a sort of similar um, topic in terms of type types of content, um, we've got a question from Rosica Lafcheva. Um, which tools would you recommend for literary translations, for literary translations? Are there any tools you would recommend? Mm, not really. I mean, it depends uh, if it's, it's really uh, it's fiction or novel, yeah. um, poetry. No, I, mm -hmm. I would I would use just uh, Word. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, so word processing tool and yeah. uh, possibly uh, if we have maybe recurring terminology, uh, terminology management tool just to keep uh -huh. track. If you uh -huh. maybe if you need to do lots of research, you you might want to have those links uh, mm -hmm. uh, next to you, and you don't mm -hmm. want to look for them three times. So mm -hmm. and uh, yes, uh, maybe we talk about um, um, voice recognition. That that could yeah. be a nice thing to have, uh, just to you know <laughs> sit back and just. Uh, use your voice and uh, mm -hmm. maybe it feels even more natural because with this um, segmentation it, it, it kills <laughs> it kills really the language to be mm -hmm. honest I mean it's mm -hmm. nice to recycle to have uh, your database and store everything you did before to run the concordance searches and stuff but um, from the language point of view it, it I, to me it, it, it feels like it's, it's limiting me at times I, I don't cool. want to I wouldn't want to have it and maybe sometimes I just finalize finalize the files that means I'm just um, converting mm -hmm. the, the bilingual so the Trados mm -hmm. uh, file memory mm -hmm. file into the original format so back me may, may back to, to word and then I go through the file again and just merge and split and or maybe just leave something out <laughs> I mm -hmm. hope my clients mm -hmm. are not listening but <laughs> sometimes you don't even need to translate every bit sure sure it's also a cultural thing for mm -hmm. Italians maybe you don't want to listen to the same thing three times and then just you 
just say it nicely once and it, it's enough. <laughs> okay. You're fine. Okay. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. And and we've got uh, we've got lots of sort of lots more questions around sort of confidentiality and and things and lots of them are going into individual cap tools, which again we can't really answer those questions on CIOL's presentation, but there will be presentations later in the week about some of the questions we're getting. Um, but, but one of the questions is when you're using a like a desktop tool such as you know maybe Trados or, or, or MemoQ, but then integrating it with something like DeepL or or the other machine translation, whether there are then you know cloud security potential confidentiality questions there, whether you might need um, approval from the work provider, for example, as Trevor Hancock asks, um, and there's there's a few similar questions to that coming in the chat. And that's a really complex <laughs> question. Mm. Um, first of all, it's like, um, does your client knows about it? Do you want him to know? Uh, are you going? Uh, you're, are you doing it anyway, even though he, he doesn't want to? So first of all, this is like a, a question of ethic or mm. philo philosophical question. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. first of all. Uh, then um, again, my rule of thumb is um, if you pay for a subscription, like I have the, the deeper abo, mm -hmm. so basically I, I can use it uh, and I pay 20 euros a month, I guess, yeah, pretty much. And uh, then uh, it's safe. The, the provider okay. saying me, this deeper is an example, but there are plenty of them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They, they, they write it down in the terms and conditions. They are not going okay. to use your content. Right. And right. Uh, maybe what you then you could do is um, you can, um, of course, anonymize your data. You can maybe mm -hmm. you, you have, um, I don't know, uh, Apple computers and <laughs> just to mm -hmm. take a famous example. And then you can maybe um, um, replace Apple with X66 and then you have to put it back. For instance, mm -hmm. if you want really to be sure nothing is, is going, I don't know where, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, maybe just uh, hide uh, specific sessions like uh, contact details, you just, you do it, you, you just leave it and then you do it yourself. And, um, but one main point, because someone here in the BDU uh, took the time to read <laughs> <laughs> the whole document with the term of in conditions of deeper. Mm -hmm. What they are saying, um, they are telling you, yeah, we are not going to use your content and blah blah mm -hmm. blah. But they they are not uh, responsible for basically the way from all the travel of the content from your computer to right. Deeper is in is the servers are in Island, for instance. Okay. And then back. Yes, because right. they, are, they are not, they can take control of that journey. Okay. So if you, they are always st stating, um, if you have sensible, confidential data, think about yeah. it, right? So not because of us, but because of this, this, right. this okay. uh, travel okay. going on, which is a general consideration. Like for <laughs> some, any some, yeah. yes, some clients yeah. are, oh, this is really confidential. And then they attach the, just they attach the file to the email. Say, <laughs> so maybe you should put it. You send it in a different way because this is sure. confidential. No, well, this is general consideration about confidentiality. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. but it's interesting to know though that they've got a defined policy um, because I know at least it always used to be an issue with Google Translate, for example, with companies that that you have no such guarantees they would reuse exactly. um, yeah. your data to, to to build them. So I know for a lot of companies they once they realise that lots of you know the information security would 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 ban that. But um, okay. Great, great. Well, um, I, we, we've 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 run out of time here, I think. So <laughs> so it's been, been wonderful. We could still keep going with with all the questions um, here. Um, lots of thanks. Thank you to everyone um, in the chat as well who's who, who's, who's been passing on their th thanks to to, to Sara. Sorry if I haven't been able to to mention you. Um, but but yeah, it's been a real eye opener. It's been full of useful tri uh, tips and tricks. Um, I should let everybody know um, that, that you will get a CPD certificate along with a recording um, of, 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 to the webinar, um, and that will be sent within the next three working days. Um, for our COL members, you'll get this in it as a member benefit forever, um, and, um, but it would be great, again, if you could log uh, your CPD activity, especially if you're a chartered linguist um, on my CPD. Um, 
as I mentioned before, you, you can still sign up to the um, individual cat tool providers presentations later in the week via col.org.uk. Lots of these questions have been on specific tools which we haven't been able to address, but I'm sure they'll be more than happy to address them in those presentations. Um, and I think now we're just ready to close the, the, the webinar. So I'd like to thank you again, Sada, so much for the presentation demo and answering all these random questions. That's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Nadine from CIOL in the background, who's been helping this event to run smoothly. And lastly, thank all of our viewers, and I hope you've enjoyed it. We've had an incredible number. Uh, the numbers were, were rising, and then we got up to 266, and they st it stayed almost throughout, almost everybody stayed throughout the entire session. So thank you very, very much um, to everybody, and we will close the webinar.